welcome again this is dr susan Gitao. you can continue subscribing to my youtube channel like and share this blessing to other people today i'm going to talk about my journey with mindful self-compassion practice in the year 2018 february chris gamma and susan pollack these are trainers for united states of america center of mindful self-compassion california had an arrangement with a money counseling center and i came in with the kenya counseling and psychological association and pulled together 55 practicing therapists and we were trained for an eight intensive week uh, program uh, called Mindful Self-Compassion 8-week program. You can see it on their website, Center for Mindful Self-Compassion. And let me tell you, I did not know what I was going for, but the world, my, the world's mindful self-compassion. They actually made me think it's about me. And honestly speaking, I went there as a counselor because I thought it was about my well-being. And for sure, Mindful Self-Compassion is one program that trains people to develop a self-care practice that has kindness, it has compassion, and it makes you appreciate your humanity as I have known it. And so when I finished my uh, intensive uh, eight-week program with Chris Gamma and uh, Susan Pollack, but also assisted by Lila Nasi of Texas USA. I really felt it's one practice I want to have for the rest of my life. I didn't know how, but I allowed everything to flow. And thank you, Lila Nasi. I know you're watching me because you encouraged me when you listened to me and you told me, Susan, you work with many people that need compassion. You uh, can also uh, suffer from burnout and compassion fatigue. And this could be a self-care practice that would really be beneficial. And for sure, it has been. And thank you so much, my mentor in this uh, mindful self-compassion practice. I call you my father. I call you my big brother. I call you my friend, Chris Gamma. And you know, Chris Gamma and Christine Neff are the pioneers of mindful self-compassion. Very humble people. And they have touched lives all over the world. Mindful self-compassion program is one program that is not discriminative. It does not look at your race, your ethnic background. It doesn't look at your socioeconomic status because the first program that we had in Kenya was on a grant by Center of Mindful Self-Compassion. And I proceeded to the United States of America the same year uh, in uh, November to do the MSC or Mindful Self-Compassion Teacher Training course. That was also a high cost training. And I really celebrate you, Steve, uh, the director of Center for Mindful Self-Compassion for making it possible for me. Honestly speaking, with, with my earnings in Kenya, and even from my practice, uh, private practice, I would not have afforded. I can't afford. And you made it possible for me to come there. And I was accommodated by Chris Gamma in his house, a house that who is who in the world of mindfulness and mindful self-compassion has visited. Thank you so much. I felt so honored, Chris Gamma and Claire. You always remain in my heart. And after I did that, it was unfortunate because you're supposed to co-teach when you're two people. So the other person I was supposed to go with, who introduced me to Mindful Self-Compassion, Florence Busiega, uh, a childhood friend and um, who happens to also uh, be a friend to Chris Gamma when she lived in the States, left for South Korea when we were supposed to proceed to America. And so I came back to Kenya alone. It can be a very uh, challenging moment to teach alone. And so what I have been doing a lot is to apply mindful self-compassion in my own life. And I have also shared it with other people, my students at the university and even the professional counselors that I supervise. But I'm so happy 
that we shall be teaching this coming Saturday will be our retreat day a four hour retreat we will be doing this uh, with Miriam Miriam is 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 based in uh, USC California right now but she's from Germany a great sister a great friend we are going to go teach I'm ready to learn a lot from her and we, we, we only have in this first class of 25 and, and right now I think we only have in five remaining to just close the first class but you you can also continue asking for this class opportunity going forward it's my prayer because it is also uh, working on a grant uh, and so people are only registering to show that commitment with uh, uh, 3,500 Kenya shillings and that is an approximate of 30 US dollars and what I would want to encourage you uh, who is watching you, me, if you are a practitioner, you are a counselor, you are a medic, you are in HR, mindful self-compassion does not choose who can train. The only thing you need to know is that do you want to develop a self-care practice that you can also share with those that you love? And I want to share my journey. How have I changed? I would like to tell you before I did mindful self-compassion and got into the practice of meditation. Sometimes it's just uh, self-retreat uh, because I, I, the only time I had a chance to do a very good retreat is when I was in the U.S. with the community or the group uh, that I was studying with, uh, you find that you have a lot of time to go inward. And what has thrilled me and really works for me, because you might take up this course and it's going to be different for you, but for me, the body scanning. We really listen to our bodies. And for me, it shocked me that I never, ever used to think that focusing on my physiological awareness, that body scanning, like you can close your eyes and just listen to your heartbeat. It was very, very shocking to learn that I can hear even my blood moving. That means in this world, we live within a very noisy environment. It could be noisy, the physical environment. It could be noisy, psychological environment. It could be noisy, spiritual environment. It could be noisy, interpersonal relationships. It could be noisy, you engaged in your work, whatever you do on a daily basis. And so that can deny you an opportunity. If you are not intentional, if you are not mindful, of what could be happening within your body. And to tell you for a fact, I have been able to scan. Like if I just spend five, 10 minutes, every morning I do that, I am able to pick a part of my body that has tension. And even if mindful self-compassion is not a practice to make you feel better, what has shocked me, which is so paradoxical, is that you end up feeling better. It's not that that is the intention, and I love that, that you are open to the experience. You want to be aware of that part of your body that could be tense when you're doing the body scanning. When you're trying to ground yourself into the present moment, you just become aware. And I want to tell you, it's been very, very wonderful to walk this journey. The other uh, self-compassion practice that has really helped me is the loving kindness presence even when things are very difficult for example if i feel i have not done my job very well i just tell myself susan you're still beautiful i am beautiful i am kind i am generous i am alive i am healthy and so when i keep speaking these loving kindness phrases to my life to myself they change the atmosphere of where I am, they change the atmosphere of my thoughts, the atmosphere of my feelings, the atmosphere of how I interact with other people. I have also found that when I get uh, memories of uh, difficult emotions, 
I am able to be in love and to be okay with my difficult emotions. And I want to tell you it's been a journey because I ran so many things for sure. And one of the emotional uh, disturbances that I do get is being in a state of anxiety, constant state of anxiety. And when I'm there, I like to tell myself that I need to really be in love with that emotion. So I, I give it a name. Sometimes it's just the name as it is, anxiety. But I can also give it another name. And I like to include my cultural, uh, I, I, philosophical ideations in that. And so I also ask myself, uh, what is this emotion doing to my body? And so, for example, for anxiety, I just start having a conversation that this anxiety is making me feel like I'm not good enough. And where is that in my body? Again, I locate it in my body and I can speak to it. And as I speak to that emotion, I find the emotion melting away. So at the end of the day, I have learned dealing with difficult emotions it's not about fighting them or fighting against them it is about allowing those emotions to be and so i have become a befriender of my own negative emotions and probably any other emotion that i can tell once in a while just creeps in is the emotion of fear and sometimes it's because um uh, sometimes this life is so unpredictable. I think throughout my life up to where I am, I have seen very many unpredictable situations. And so once in a while I can be thrown into that state of fear. And so again, I befriend fear. And I find myself just getting over it naturally. And so dealing with difficult emotions and knowing how to befriend them and live with them and speak to them has been a wonderful, wonderful practice. I also like uh, the aspect of having that, uh, the compassionate listening. That has particularly helped me, especially in my counseling practice. Somebody can come there, they are sharing a very, very challenging experience, very overwhelming. And so all I do is to listen compassionately. And I can start sending my love and kindness to them. I can start sending my wishes to them. They are not aware, but they are seated there. And this is the magic that I can't explain, that the energies I am sending them, even when they are in their difficult situations, I find them lightening up or brightening up. I find them like they are, they are okay with what is going on in their lives. And I'm like, wow, this is magical. Because before, at times I could get so overwhelmed and lost, and I'm thinking, what should I be doing for this client? And the counseling practice requires you actually encourage and enable your client to use their own inner resource to help themselves. I have also loved the compassionate friend uh, uh, practice, you know, like you're just thinking, you're, you're going through your own difficult emotions, you're going through your own difficult uh, experiences in life, they can be brought by many things. But when you ask somebody, imagine someone going through exactly the same thing you're going through, what would you tell them? You know, what would you wish them? And the minute you're thinking of what you would wish them, you basically ask him, why is it so difficult to tell it to yourself? And so I have found it very, very powerful. That one I've actually applied with my clients and it has worked magic. It has worked magic. And there are others that I have been able like to contextualize just to find uh, the place for the same uh, in my own culture. And, I, and I've really found um, uh, Africans are notoriously religious. We believe in a higher power. We believe in God. And in some situations, and especially when I'm dealing with uh, Christian clients that would like the integration of their faith into practice, we have found uh, biblical verses that go in line with compassion. Like now, for the Christians, Jesus Christ, wherever he went, he went doing good. And there is nothing else Jesus did. It was more of compassion ministry. And mindful self-compassion is one practice 
that makes you think and act like Jesus Christ. And so for Christians, I have found it a very easy practice. And Jesus, most of the time, when things were difficult for him, because he shared our humanity, most of the time he used to retreat. And so there is no crime for therapist. I am one to retreat and recuperate, re-energize, rejuvenate, and be back when you are healthy, be back when you are more compassionate. And so I have found that also very, very helpful. You will not believe it. Before I did mindful self-compassion, taking a holiday used to be at all older. But after I have been into this practice, I still say I am young. I am still an amateur. I'm learning. And I know I'm going to learn better and better as we make more teachers in Africa. I think right now we are three teachers in Africa. We shall make more and more and more. And from this course, we are going to kick off on Saturday the 29th with a four-hour retreat, I believe we will have more people after the eight-week hour pro eight week program who will progress to the teacher training. And from there, if we have many teachers in Africa, this is a program that you cannot miss to engage in or to take part in. This is a practice of compassion, kindness, and sharing common humanity that you would not want to miss. So what are the benefits that I have seen in this? I have realized that mindful self-compassion or self-compassion practice is one practice that one does not discriminate, is one that can be applied by anyone and everyone and anywhere. Sometimes just where you are, you can be anxious and all you need is to take one breath and out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And life goes on. And so it can be practiced anywhere, by anyone, anytime. Because I do it in the morning, I do it in the middle of the day, just small bits of it. It is also a practice that is very, very cost effective. If you learn it and master it, probably you may not need my services as a psychotherapist. Maybe you only need somebody to encourage you or you just need to join a community of people practicing the same and that becomes your lifestyle. I have also found it especially here in Africa where we have very few therapists and we also don't have the money to pay for counseling services that this is a practice that can be taught to a large group of people and if they can embrace it they can actually start living that life that I am enjoying right now. I have found myself having less burdens especially where I feel like I have been hurt I have been treated with unfairness. I don't know what has happened. I want to tell you this. I have become one person that holds on to no grudges. I have become one person who is not stuck in one situation of feeling pity on myself or thinking there is no headway. And I have seen amazing opportunities open up since I did Mindful Self-Compassion. I have seen amazing, amazing insights about how I live, how I practice, how I relate with other people, how I do my work. Very, very, very amazing. I can also say that uh, I have found my stress levels going down. I have found my burnout uh, management coping skills enhanced. I have found my interpersonal relationships, especially within the family, my colleagues and my clients being enhanced. And I have felt this is the time now, you can imagine. I have felt this is a practice I would like to spread to all Africans if I can and if I can reach them. And that is why I'm so excited that come 29th, we are kicking off the second Mindful Self-Compassion, but the first virtual online eight-week MSc program in Africa. 
and so the people that we are going to start with the pioneer uh, participants, I can see you there, Professor Beatrice Burugu, you are in this class, I can see you there, Madam Jean, I can see you there, Anne Gitao, frequents, she lives in Dubai but frequents the country, I can see you Liz Kimondo, I know you've had some mindfulness uh, training and I know this one is gonna be a very big uh, probably top up for you, Agnes Mwangi, I can see you there, Kip Tum, I can see you there, and I can also see you, Rebecca Mamwene, and you deal a lot with teenagers. And so I see you making a very big difference. I can also see you, Vincent, working with uh, the inmates in, uh, in prison is not easy. And when I say it's a practice that can be embraced by professionals wherever they are, it's great. And I have one lovely, lovely, lovely daughter of mine, Manuela. And I know this is going to be an added resource for you as we journey together. And for Miriam, I thank you so much for seeking for this grant and the continent that you thought is actually Africa and the person you thought of co-teaching with is one Susan Gitao. So I will continue talking more about mindful self-compassion and especially how this practice can be embraced in Africa, how we can make use of it in all sectors, schools, at home in the church, in the workplace, wherever. And it is okay for us Africans to know this. Because if you have a self-care resource that you can always tap from, always, whenever you have difficult moments and your life is stabilized and you're able to move on, what else do you need? And so for more or uh, YouTube videos that I have done, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Susan Kitao. Remember to like and share. Make another friend benefit from what you've had. And if you go to my other social media uh, platforms, I have Susan Gitao Counseling Foundation, where we can continue making a difference by raising those who are down there, the vulnerable communities, individuals, and families, to a place of honor, to a place of dignity. You can follow me there. And you can also go to our website, Susan Gitao Counseling Foundation, and see how we can partner to make a difference. Probably if you partner with me, because I don't know how many other times we are going to be given a grant like this one to spread this powerful message or gospel, I would call it, of mindful self-compassion. Maybe you can see how we can actually spread this to universities, spread this to schools, spread this to the military barracks, spread this to prison everywhere to the church we can spread this message and if that happens then we are assured of a healthier mentally healthier community spiritually healthier community and interpersonally healthier or socially healthier communities and individuals this is your one and only dr susan gitao let's continue discussing this message this gospel of mindful self-compassion Asante Sana, thank you very much. I would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Susan Guitar, where you will access mental health tips every week, every month, every year. Thank you.